Hi, welcome to the Black Spruce Knitting Channel. My name's Allie. I live in Vermont in the Green Mountains on Abenaki land with my partner Chris and our dog Darwin. Um, Darwin is joining me today. And this episode's going to be a little bit different. Um, I took some footage today of what I was up to, um, mostly focused on the theme of the transition to spring since today is the equinox. Um, and I'm going to share that with you. I hope that's okay. I'm going to talk kind of quickly about the knitting projects that I've been working on um, and then share those other things. So if you are more interested in knitting, a more in-depth podcast will be up soon, but I'm going to call this a vlog today. <laughs> um, I just sort of want to update you, but I haven't finished anything. Um, and I'll show you one thing, really one, two things that I've purchased. Um, I do still have this wonderful, wonderful yarn trade from Liza from the Volblum podcast, and I sent my package to her, and she should get it this week. So once she has hers, I will share what she sent me. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I can direct you to her, um, her episode so that you can see if you're interested, which is why I'm waiting, even though I'm very excited about it. Um, thank you all for all your wonderful comments on my last video interested to hear what you think of this kind of different format, if it's interesting to you, um, if you prefer just to sit down podcast, I completely understand. Um, but I wanted to try something a little bit different today. So um, I'm just going to jump in. Um, in my last podcast, I mentioned that I'm knitting The Fumber by Marie Wallen out of Nash Island Tide, which is a very special yarn made from the wool of wild sheep that live on an island in Maine. And I said that I wasn't sure about the size, but that I wasn't going to frog, but I did rip it out because I wanted to make a smaller size. So this is going to be 43 inches. The other one was 46 inches, and I tried it on and it was just too big. So I restarted the body, but I actually knit the sleeves first because I wasn't ready to start the body again. So I do have two sleeves, almost completely done. I was knitting the magic loop, but I was getting a little bit of laddering. Um, I think because this yarn is so sticky, I don't usually get laddering when I knit magic loop. I really had to yank it. Um, and so now I'm just finishing them up with a small circumference circular needles. And I have started the body again, and then I'll connect it all and I will knit the yoke. So um, still going. I actually don't mind too much ripping out because this yarn is such a joy to knit with. It's just beautiful. Um, so hopefully next time I will be able to show you some of the color work progress because once I get up to the yoke, it's just color work. I also purchased this yarn that I had heard a lot about, oops, which is called Baraka Mochi. It's relatively inexpensive. It's about 10 US dollars for 50 grams, which is 200 yards. But because it's bulky, you don't need too much. Um, and it's like a nylon, like a chainette. So it's got kind of like an interesting kind of, you can't see it all, but it's got like a nylon structure. And then they blow through, I guess, the sort of alpaca and the wool. Um, and I got the black color, but it has all of these lovely rainbow bits. And I have knit almost all of sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which is a pretty basic raglan pattern. I am doing the sleeves two at a time. And yeah, it's been quite easy. I didn't knit a gauge swatch. Usually I knit a gauge swatch, but I felt like this would be pretty forgiving. Um, and it's just been very quick. So I'm almost done. I've got a couple more inches of sleeves and then sleeve ribbing and it will be ready. Um, I love to wear black, but I don't have any black knitwear and I wanted to try this yarn. Um, it's great for me to wear black because my dog is black and so you can't see his fur. <laughs> um, so I thought this would be really cozy, but as it's been getting warmer here, I've been like, oh, I don't really want to knit with things that are um, too warm. <laughs> things that are too warm um so um I'll be done with it and I think that will be good I have a couple more warm projects in mind before I try to transition to more like spring and summer projects um 
yeah. But this is going, let's see, almost done. And those are actually my only two works in progress right now. Um, but when I'm done with this, I'm going to cast on the Rad Radish Socks by Stone Knits. And I have the yarn for it because I'm just using stuff from Stash. And I have these three colors as leftovers from my Wise Weed Weeds um, sweater, which I've spoken about. And these are Knit Picks palette. And so Bittersweet Heather, I think Huckleberry Heather maybe, and then this one I think I want to say Verdant. Yes, Verdant Heather. I do need to decide if I want to use for the fourth color, I have, this is very old, but I have in my stash, this is also Knit Picks palette, but this white color. Or I have a little tiny bit of hand spun. The weight of this is pretty inconsistent, but I think it would work. Um, this was two different batches of hand spun. I had like two leftover bobbins of single plies, and so I just plied them together. Um, and I think that this would be really special. So I'm leaning towards this. I think that this would be really sweet for little mitts. What do you think? This one? This actually would be cute too, but I think I'm gonna go with the hand spun. Um, yeah, it's leftovers from some special projects. So um, I think it would be cool to put them into these mitts. That is really all of the knitting content I have. Um, I do actually have one acquisition that I will show you quickly. This yarn is not new. I've mentioned that I bought this at Junction Fiber Mill. It's their making tracks. I'm so sorry that it has hair on it. <laughs> it's their making tracks line and I purchased this to do a sweater for Chris. And I bought three skeins of Blue Sky Fibers wool stock, which is just 100% wool. These are the big skeins, they're 150 grams. I don't remember how much this cost, but I also got this on yarn.com. It's 100% fine Highland wool. Um, and the colorway is cast iron. And I just got it to pair with this. I was originally going to do a color block sweater, but I think I am going to do a yoke sweater because I think this would be really pretty as a petite knitter. I can't remember the title, but I will put a picture. But I think this would be gorgeous as like a color work yoke. Um, I would like to knit this before it gets warm. Some of my projects, I think like my Nutidin and my East Wind jacket, I think probably will end up being in the fall. Um, we don't have air conditioning here, but it gets quite hot and quite sticky. Um, and so I'm kind of thinking about what I can knit this summer. <laughs> um, and I will probably be knitting some of the like lighter weight wool, some of the wool blends and cottons and things, and also maybe superwash that I have in my stash that I'm um, trying to use. So I would like to get this done though before it gets too, too hot. I think it would be, I don't know, I think it's gonna be really cool. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, and that's all the knitting I have. So I will now play some of the footage that I took this weekend, um, and I hope you enjoy it. I went to Northern Vermont this weekend to visit my friend Audrey, who lives in a really rural area. It's really beautiful up in this part of the state. We hung out and took a walk in the woods. Audrey lives across the street from this goat and the sheep who are really good friends. They're both super playful and sweet, and I've definitely seen them escape their pen, but they never go far away.
Everything in the woods is melting and wet. Nothing is green yet, but it feels like plants are starting to stir and come out of dormancy. This is Pip, Audrey's dog. She's a breed called a Swedish Valhund, and she's bred to herd cows. Pip really, really enjoyed our walk. We might get another cold snap or two and possibly more snow, but the temperature has been consistently above freezing. In Vermont, March is sugaring season when people tap trees and then boil the sap into maple syrup. People use these lines to connect buckets, which makes the sap easier to collect. March is also mud season, and this year has been particularly bad. Vermont has lots of dirt roads that become difficult to, to traverse at this time of year. The upper part of our road is actually closed right now, which is posing some problems, but we're figuring it out. I left mid-afternoon to head home from Audrey's. Chris and I wanted to spend the spring equinox getting ready for our garden, which means starting seeds. I got our seed starting soil wet and mixed it to what Chris calls brownie batter consistency. Basically you want it to just stick together but not drip water when you squeeze it. Hmm. Oh crud. <laughs> what do you think? Is the bottom still dry though? In the center? No. And then I packed our seed trays to get them ready for planting. Let him off leash. You can let him off leash if you want to. What? Come here, Baba. Hi. Major Mama spoiler. Oh, soil. Mm. Do you want to help? Not you, Darwin. You can help too if you want to. Do you want to plant out here or inside? That's like falling off. Hmm. That's all the trace. We could do the pots if you want. Don't have to, oops. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. We have lots and lots of seeds, and we didn't start every type, but we started many. We have seeds that my dad ordered and seeds given to us by friends. Our friend Matthew gave us interesting and rare vegetable varieties to try. I'm excited to see how they turn out. Chris also started some flowers, like black-eyed Susans and snapdragons. Where we live, the last frost date is May 15th, so March is a good time to start summer plants indoors that will take a long time to grow and need really a longer growing season like peppers and tomatoes. 
If you give them extra time inside, they have a better chance of doing well when they can safely be outside. We're trying to be really thoughtful about our garden because the growing season is so short. This is our first full year living in the mountains and our first year living somewhere with enough room for a big garden. Chris and I both have professional farm and garden experience, but I'm not positive what's going to be successful and I'm sure that there are gonna be some failures. Either way, I think that we'll learn a lot. While I don't know if it will ever be possible for us to be completely self-sufficient, I think we're both hoping to homestead and live in close connection with the land. I actually see knitting as an extension of these dreams. It feels both beautiful and functional, fun and practical. Whether it's knitting or gardening, I feel really fortunate to be able to use my hands to do so many interesting things. Please let me know if you enjoy hearing about our homesteading journey. I think many people have found this channel through knitting and I'm definitely going to continue to make videos about knitting and fiber. But to me, fiber feels connected to all of these other things too, to humans, to animals, and to the land. I hope that we can explore all of these gifts together. Hope that you take care and have a great day.